Let's be honest, 2020 has been a pretty awesome year when it comes to Sony and its camera releases this year. We've got a few awesome things that we've been waiting for as well as quite a few awesome lens releases. And yeah, that's pretty much it. But today we're talking just about those lenses, specifically five of them that have come out here in 2020 that I would definitely recommend to you. Let's check it out. Number one, we're jumping right in and we're talking about our five favorite lenses, well mine anyways, of 2020 that I'd recommend to you. Starting with none other than the amazing Biltrox 85 f1.8. If you are looking for a fast prime to do portraits with on a budget, I don't think there is a lens that can be beat. It is an incredible value lens, fantastically sharp, a great fast aperture and great build quality to boot. And the price, wow. You really can't beat it. And if you manage to get the Mark I, here's a video showing you how to actually change that thing into a f1.6. True story. Anyways, the Viltrox I would absolutely recommend to you. It's a beast in pretty much every regard. And like I said, I think the best value for money E-mount lens that you can buy. And I'm really not joking when I say that. This thing really has it all for the price. It's well constructed. It's well packaged. It's an amazing budget lens. It does have a bit of heft to it with its solid metal construction. It's a great size and weight. There aren't any buttons or switches and the oversized focus wheel is stiff and confident. It has 72 millimeter filter threads and a nice metal mount with a USB port included for any firmware updates you might need. Because of that port and a lack of a rubber gasket makes weather sealing a bit questionable, but its overall build is quite good. When it comes to autofocus, it's actually quite fast and reliable, but does make a little bit of noise. This is kind of expected in a lens of this price range, but it does produce some incredibly beautiful images. I would recommend this lens more for photography over video. Be sure to check out my full in-depth review for a more detailed look at this lens. If you're wondering how much this lens actually costs, it comes in at 399 US dollars, an absolutely incredible value. By the way guys, if you don't know who I am, my name's Stefan Malik. I do a lot of photography and filmmaking news reviews and tutorials. So if you do enjoy this content, you like this video, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and join the community. And by the way, if you wanna win that Viltrox, here it is, I'm giving it away to one of you lucky subscribers. That's all you gotta do, hit that subscribe button and just, Watch my videos, that's, that's really all you gotta do. Number two on the list is a fantastic lens. It's by Sony this time. It's the 20 millimeter F1.8. This thing has a lot of what you're looking for. It's sharp, it's fast, it's a great size and weight. You really can't go wrong with it. Now the 20 millimeter F1.8 from Sony is about 90% of what the 24 G Master is, but a chunk of money less. It looks very similar, it feels very similar. It's a great size and weight. It has a nice aperture ring, as well as the convenience of an automatic manual focus switch and a customizable focus hold button. On the front, you'll find 67 millimeter filter threads, as well as Sony's proprietary coatings. And on the back, a nice metal mount with a little rubber gasket for weather sealing. So now let's have a look at performance. And I'm happy to say that it's quite good at almost everything. It's autofocus, which is basically silent, utilizes Sony's XD linear focus motors, for quiet and quick reliability. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. It's definitely not the fastest I've seen, and it's not quite as accurate as the 24, but it does the job. In good light, it's fairly good. In low light here where I'm pushing the limits, it does struggle a little bit being slow to focus and hunting here and there, but it's a decent performance. I found the autofocus when it comes to stills even faster and more reliable. As far as the optics are concerned, it's a great performer and even sharper than the G Master. With nine bladed aperture, the bokeh of this lens is actually pretty decent for an aspherical ultra wide angle lens. Don't expect wonders as this is not what these lenses are built for, but in this lens's case, it does a particularly good job. Overall, a great built, great performing lens, but it does come at a cost. 
Is it worth it? You be the judge. Number three, the Tamron 28 to 200. Insanely versatile, incredibly well priced. I just, I can't say enough about this lens. If you're looking for an all in one lens, if you're looking for the lens to do it all in this day and age, this is the lens. If you have one lens and you are a beginner to intermediate shooter, well, this is probably the one for you. It is phenomenal. It's versatile, like I said. It's got a fast f2.8. It has almost macro light capabilities. The list goes on and on. Definitely worth checking this lens out. If I was just starting photography or had to do it all over again, this would probably be the one lens that I'd want to have. This thing is incredibly versatile from the size to the weight to what it can actually do. Tamron has done a fantastic job as of late engineering newer lenses, and this one is absolutely no exception. It has the same look, quality, and features as pretty much every Tamron lens that's come out in the last few years. Very similar to the 28-75 and 17-28. It's a mainly plastic or composite material, but it feels good. It has the same 67mm filter threads as the rest of them, and overall, it's quite a well-made lens. Aside from a lock switch, it doesn't have any buttons or switches. Both the focus and zoom rings are decent, and it does have a rubber gasket for weather sealing. The autofocus capabilities and system in this lens are good. It's not great, it does have a few issues and limitations, and as you can see here in a lower light situation in video, it actually does a pretty decent job. It's quick and smooth. When it comes to stills, it's going to take most of what you throw at it, with the exception of fast moving subjects. Mind you, this is a stress test, and in this situation I found that it hit about 50% of the time. Now I don't want you to be confused here. This lens is absolutely going to keep up with the majority of the things that you throw at it. I always do my best to test them in the most stressful situations, so you don't have to. But for the average photographer, this thing's going to be great for pretty much everything. You can shoot portraits with it, you can shoot landscapes, and with its impressive minimum focus distance, you can shoot macro like shots even at 28 millimeters. I love how Tamron's engineering some of its newer lenses to give us these capabilities. It really makes them fun, and this lens one of the most versatile that you can buy. Here's an example of that in action. You can see that you can actually get quite a bit closer at 28 millimeters, allowing for some really interesting perspectives. Although it only has seven aperture blades, you can get some really nice transitions and blurred backgrounds and take advantage of that f2.8 when you're up close to your subjects. Check out the focal range to see exactly how versatile this lens really is. It's quite impressive. If you've made it this far and you haven't already, you might as well hit that subscribe button and make sure you let me know down in the comments what you like and what you don't like about this lens. Coming in at an incredible $729, if you ask me, this is one of the most versatile and best value for money all-in-one lenses that you can buy. Number four on the list also goes to Tamron. It's the newer 70 to 180 f2.8. This is the gaping hole that's finally been filled in the full frame 70 to 200 market. And although it's not a 70 to 200, it's pretty darn close. It is phenomenally well priced. It's sharp, it's fast. And I think we really needed this lens. A lot of people are really happy with it. Although it's not perfect, it does have a few things missing. It is a great pickup and a great value. Yes, this looks a lot like the last lens we looked at, the 28 to 200, and it is. It's basically the same lens, just bigger, a little bit better performing, and a little bit more expensive. An inexpensive version of the 70 to 200 G Master, and it is half the price for a reason. It is a great size and weight. It does have the exact same features as the last lens, no buttons or switches, and it does have that composite or plastic build. It also has 67 millimeter filter threads, along with a metal mount and a rubber gasket for weather sealing. Do note that to cut costs, image stabilization was not included in this lens, and there is for me anyway a sense of cheapness to it, from the exposed screws to just the overall feel of it, there's something missing, but it's far from horrible. Utilizing Tamron's new linear focus motors, the autofocus speed of this lens is incredible. It's lightning fast and does prioritize speed over accuracy I find. In good light, you're not going to have a problem, but in backlit situations or less than perfect conditions, you might find it struggling and hunting just a bit. 
in decent light where you're probably going to be shooting most of the time, you're not going to have any issues. The optics of this lens and the focusing capabilities are a little bit different than your typical lens. Using your autofocus, your minimum focus distance is 33 and a half inches throughout the entire focal range. Switch to manual, however, to get down to 10.6 inches on the wide end with one to two magnification ratio capabilities to get macro like shots. But do note that it only works on the wide end. Zooming in will bring your minimum focus distance back out to 33 and a half inches. I'm really liking the near macro capabilities that Tamron's giving us with a lot of their lenses lately. Autofocus consistency, even with moving subjects, is actually quite good. Here's a series of 55 shots I took, pretty much bang on in every shot. So this lens is going to be great for action shots, for animals and wildlife, even though it doesn't have too much reach, and of course, family and events. It's going to shine when it comes to portraits as well, and its nine aperture blades means it can produce some incredibly beautiful bokeh. Once again, for a more detailed look at this lens, including sharpness and the lack of image stabilization effects, make sure you check out my full in-depth review. But coming in at around $1,200 or about half of the G Master, this lens has incredible value. Number five on the list, none other than the Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 DGD and art. And yes, it's not perfect. It has its issues like any other lens, but it is a beast. It's great when it comes to manual focus. It's got beautiful bokeh. It's a fast f 2.8. It's got great build quality and it's decently priced. So having said that, it's definitely worth a second look. And again, one of my five top lenses of 2020. So here it is. It's got some heft to it because it's very well made, built like a tank really, and it has reminiscent qualities of the G Master. It's got the buttons and switches you're looking for, as well as a customizable focus hold button and a zoom lock switch. Its focus and zoom rings are grippy, nice and accurate, and its manual focus performance is very nice. It does have large 82 millimeter filter threads, 11 aperture blades, and of course a metal mount that's decently weather sealed. A very well built lens and you can feel it as soon as you pick it up. But what about performance? That's what really matters. So for video, it's actually quite good. Although it is a little bit heavier and bigger than I typically want to use for something when it comes to video, it does work very well, especially when it comes to manual focus. I actually use it in a lot of the videos that I make for you guys here on YouTube. If I'm being honest, the autofocus is on par with the Tamron 28 to 75 and the G Master, maybe a little bit more accurate, but a little bit slower than the Tamron. We're really splitting hairs here. It's going to do the job and it's going to produce some beautiful results. I've used this lens intimately with thousands of photos taken and hours and hours of video. And I have to say my only gripe with it is its quality control. It is a well-made lens, but for some reason does seems to get into the elements. And I have had some optical issues in multiple versions of this lens that I've received. No lens is perfect, of course, but if you do get a good copy, this thing really is beautiful. It feels like a professional lens and it definitely performs like a professional lens. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But keep in mind, its price is very good for what it is. So how much does it cost? You can pick it up for about $1,100, give or take. And for that price, if you ask me, a phenomenal value. So there you go, guys. There's my top five recommended lenses for 2020. These are new lenses that came out. And if you are looking to pick them up, I will drop affiliate links down in the description for you. I hope you liked this video and you enjoyed it. And if you did, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Join the community. Anyways, guys, like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out of here and take some more pictures. See you next time.